it seems likely that uh, Ted Cruz will be elected uh, to the U.S. Senate from Texas, from your home state of Texas. And, and if that happens, uh, he will be, I believe, the fifth statewide elected official uh, who is Latino and Republican, if you count uh, the governor of Puerto Rico, it's five. Um, and meanwhile, the Democratic Party only has one uh, in terms of senators and, and, uh, and governors, uh, Senator Menendez of New Jersey. You referred to um, the National Association of Latino Elected Officials a second ago. And yes, there are many more Latino elected officials who are Democrats than are Republicans, but not statewide. Uh, and the executive director of uh, Naleo said this has been a consistent Achilles heel for the Democratic Party. They haven't been nurturing of Hispanic leadership. I'm wondering if you think that that's the problem, why Republicans outpace Democrats so much when it comes to Latino statewide officials, and also when can we look for Texas to be a purple state because of the changing demographics? Do you see that in the next 10 years, 20, or 30? Well, I would say that both parties, and, and that both parties historically probably did, did not do a good enough job of outreach to the Latino community and cultivating leadership within the community. Um, I believe that the jury's still out with regard to the effect of the wellspring of Latino statewide candidates on the Republican side. And I say that because if, you, if we start actually getting into the mechanics of when these folks got elected, it was basically in the 2010 cycle, a Tea Party cycle, I mean, a historic wave of, of folks who, who rode into office. And then uh, I think that Tea Party cycle was a bit delayed in Texas. And so we're seeing that with Ted Cruz now. Uh, so, and I commend all of the folks, Governor Sandoval, Governor Martinez, Senator Rubio, probably, uh, who knows, but Senator, maybe Senator Cruz. Um, the issue is not the personalities, the issue really is the policies. That's why President Obama is leading 70 to 25 in the polls. But to answer your question about Texas, um, I believe that within the, ne the next six to eight years that what you're going to see is, is the acceleration of that state into a purple state for two reasons. The growth of the Latino community that is growing faster than any community. It was, you know, 60, I think 60 something percent of the growth in the last decade. But secondly, public policy polling had a fascinating cross tabs about a week and a half ago in a poll on Virginia. You usually don't see this in polls that are republic reported publicly, but it took Virginia for Romney versus Obama, and Obama was beating Romney in Virginia 50 to 45. But among folks who had lived in Virginia for at least 20 years, Romney was winning 51-45. Among folks who had only lived there 10 years, Obama was beating Romney 67 to 29. So the irony here is this, <laughs> that Texas has done relatively well during these last couple of years of downturn, and over the last couple of decades, that state has been growing like crazy. It's one of the fastest growing states. You have people moving in from moderate states into Texas, into Harris County, Travis County, Bear County, Dallas County. The combination of those two factors, the growing Latino vote and the growing number of people who come from more moderate places are gonna change that state within the next six to eight years. So by 2020 at the latest. Yeah, I'd say so, 2020.